uh, debate, the concept of debating is, uh, is always related to politics. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about politics, if you don't mind, uh, away from religion. Maybe it, it will take us back to religion, but... Politics is part of religion. <laughs> <laughs> Not today's politics. But sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, we struggled uh, in knowing where you are. Uh, we read news all over the social media that, sorry to say, but you're hunted now. Why, why are you hunted? Uh, the best answer that I can give is, I think, it is mainly because of my popularity. I've been doing Dawa for more than 25 years in India, and my lectures are there on the media, on the social network, on the YouTube, everywhere. And I was expecting that I'm living in a country, India, which is not very comfortable for the Muslims, and I've been doing Dawa, and I thought and I was sure that one day there will be trouble. That was the reason that we had taken whatever precautions we could. And recently, three years back, there's a new government that came to power. And we know we have a new Prime Minister, the Narendra Modi. Mm -hmm. And we knew that about 15 years back when he was the Chief Minister of Gujarat, one of the states in India, there are um, many NGOs, many organizations have given several reports that he was responsible for killing of more than 2,000 Muslims, making a state organized, you know, killing of Muslims at large scale, so much so that there were cases filed against him in different parts of the world. He was not given entry to USA, to UK, and he was not allowed to enter many countries of the world for several decades. About three years back, when there was election, he won the election, and, and became the Prime Minister. Now, when he became the Prime Minister, all these sanctions were removed. So this is democracy. Irrespective of who you are, if you are elected, to build relationship, they can put anything down. And he traveled to many countries, including Muslim countries, to build relationship in the first couple of years of his tenure. And it is known that the party that he belongs to is, is, uh, is against the Muslims. And we're expecting this to happen. And he was waiting to get some excuse to stop my activities. Last Ramadan, on the 27th of Ramadan last year, yes. that the 1st of July, there was a terrorist attack that took place in Dhaka. Sorry. And six terrorists, they killed about 20 foreigners in the neighboring country. And one terrorist happened to be my fan on the Facebook. So there was a small article that came in the Bangladeshi newspaper that one of the terrorists is a fan of Dr. Zakir Naik. In such articles, How many fans do you have on Facebook? On the Facebook, Alhamdulillah, now there are about 16.6 .6 million fans. Okay. Out of so which about, one out of? Out of 16.6 .6 million, four okay. and a half million are from Bangladesh. Okay. So he's one of the 16.6 .6 million <laughs> who liked me. And this news had come several times before. Most of the Muslims in the world, because of the popularity of Peace TV, which has a viewership of 200 million, when you catch a Muslim, there are high chances you know me. So even the terrorist attack that took place, whether in, in Glasgow or New York or Australia, when they catch a Muslim, he's been seeing my videos. But never has that been made into an issue. You should ask any Muslim, he has to be a fan of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So will you blame the wrong action that he has done to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No. So here we find that the Indian media blew it out of proportion. Next day, the news article came on the 3rd of July. 4th of July, almost all the newspapers, headlines, almost all, all the news channels, it was headlines that Dr. Sakir Naik inspired terrorists, and it was as though it was, everything was planned. And day and night, you know, like I became Southern. viral not only in, in the world, hmm. number one trending, you know, on the Twitter, on the Facebook. And then, alhamdulillah, many Muslim organizations in different parts of India, they protested in Bangalore, in Hyderabad, in Kerala, in Kashmir, in large numbers. And one thing good, mashallah, that the Muslims who even differed with me, you know the difference of opinion yeah, yeah, yeah. and views, even they stood up, saying we disagree that Dr. Zakir is not a terrorist. And mashallah, there was big protest, so much so that the Indian government had four different teams, NI, IB, National, uh, uh, National Investigation Agency, they had the Intelligence Bureau, that the Maharashtra police, that the Bombay police, CID, all of them 
And NI alone had nine teams, each team hanging, so few hundred. And the moment they spend money in doing research, that they saw most of my tapes and everything, mm. no problem, I was happy about it. After one month, on 2nd of August, they were forced to say in the parliament that nothing is wrong found by Dr. Zakir no. He did not find any evidence in, in his speeches, nor in his lectures. So most of the protest stopped. And I thought that this will surely be their plan. So protest stopped as the team became cool. Three months later, in November, the same government says that the Muslim personal law in India should be abolished. Uh -huh. You know, India has a Muslim personal yes. law. Muslims can follow the law in inheritance yes. and marriage, etc. So all the Muslims are against it in larger numbers to protest against it. In this fiasco, uh, two weeks after this, they banned my organization suddenly. And they banned it for five years. Claiming that, you know, they are promoting terrorism. And they started getting lectures, which I've given 10 years back. I've given 15 years back. Any logical person will know that these lectures are there on the social media for 10, 15 years. If they promoted terrorism, why suddenly now are they called? So it is mainly because of the popularity. And it is shocking that the Indian government many a times before has called me to give lecture on religion in the National Academy in Hyderabad. National Academy of Hyderabad is the largest institute for training police. It is the most prestigious institute. Imagine I have been called not once, twice. And sometimes when they did not go, they pressurized me. Yalla. They used influence. I'm saying, busy, no, you have to go. So twice I have addressed them to IPS officers, to the top ranking police. So do you mean to say they have called a terrorist? Not that they found the lecture which I gave just six months back or one year back. <laughs> These lectures were given 10 years, 15 years back. They are taking and clipping out of context and trying to prove to the world that I am promoting terrorism. The, and as you may be aware, that the World Economic Forum has said that the second most unjust media in the world is the Indian media. Never ever in the history before has anyone who has been so popular, so well known, his life is open in the media like an open book. You know, uh, we have uh, Peace TV, mashallah, name is Peace, Tana Salam, having an English language, Urdu, Bangla, Chinese. The network has more than 200 million viewers. A person who's been on the social media for, uh, for more than 15 years, I've been giving talks for more than 25 years. And Alhamdulillah, I've been awarded, though I don't think so, I deserve it, I've been awarded the most prestigious Islamic award in the world, that is the King Faisal Award for the service of Islam, which is equivalent to the Nobel Prize of Peace. It's the highest award. Alhamdulillah, I've been even given the second highest award, the Dubai Holy Quran Award, four years back. Then the Toko Mahalajri Award, that's from Malaysia, from Sharjah, from Gambia, for many countries. I've been the guest of heads of states of many countries, Muslim countries, non-Muslim countries, giving lectures in, in more than 40 countries, I've been invited. Now, such a person who's so popular, when, they, when the Indian government is laying allegations that I'm involved in terrorism, indirectly they are saying that even Saudi Arabia is promoting terrorism, even Dubai is promoting terrorism, even Malaysia is promoting terrorism, even Sharjah is promoting terrorism, and all the countries... Even the, gov the Indian government? Is yes! Because they are inviting you. Yes, so, so it is so illogical. And they are taking up clips which are not new. Okay, can be possible, hypothetically, that I was very good and suddenly last six months I have been bad. Can be. Can be. Logically, they are picking up lectures of mine which I have given 10 years back, which I have given 15 years back, which I have given 5 years back. And that means the previous government, yes, they are saying yes, the previous government promoted Zakir. Now we are very, no, we are correct. So it is illogical. Absolutely illogical. As you know, that many governments today, as we're talking about politics, many governments today, they win the election by being against Islam. And we have examples, what they're having in US. The more they speak, they get a better vote bank. That's what happened in India. They openly speak. And if you compare, recently, just a few months back, the election took place of a state called as Yupi Uttar Pradesh, which is the biggest state in India. And do you know, the person who stood for election, one of the priests, who was a Hindu priest, he told in his election campaign and in his lecture openly that the graves of the Muslim women should be dug and they should be raped. Even after saying this, he won the election. And he belonged to the same party as the Prime Minister of India. And the irony is, not that he only won, they made him the Chief Minister of that state. Yes, that means if you abuse the Muslims, imagine if you compare 
to any of the allegations they are laying compared to what he said in public that to dig the graves of the Muslim women and rape them. Nothing is happening. Is this democracy? What is exactly happening a few days ago? Why is it now more critical than ever? Yes. Previously it was more localized and the Muslim Indians supported me, Alhamdulillah. When they called me for interrogation on 31st of January, I did not re receive any official letter from them. What I was hearing from the media. When I heard from the media, my lawyer gave them my email. And when I got the email, I replied on the email. I am willing to come on video conferencing, I am willing to do a Skype interview. What do you want? I am ready to cooperate. What do you want? They are laying allegations that I am doing money laundering. I said, we are money laundering. We have been submitting our records. So what record we submitted 10 years back? They are saying that's not correct. Now, why are you saying now? When they called me for interrogation, I said that, okay, you want to interview me? I am ready to cooperate. We can have a video conferencing. We can speak on the Skype. We can speak on whatever you want. I will cooperate. Give you all the answers. They said, no, we want you physically. Now, physically, we know the history of India. Yeah, of course. We know the history of the Indian police. Out of those people, Muslims arrested for terrorism, 98% are let free. But after 10 years, after 15 years, their lives are ruined. Recently, a few months back, a Muslim by the name of Abdul Wahid, he was arrested on charges of terrorism, then was let free after 8 years, then writes a book. What was done with him? How he was tortured? The first grade of torture, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. He says how they do mental torture first, then how they take out clothes, how they put current on the private parts. Yeah. All this he mentioned in black and white. How do they do physical torture, third grade? And the fourth grade is, they even molest the lady family members, the mothers of the victim, the sisters of the victim, until they give it, until they sign false documents. So this is known to the world. And you expect me to go back, do you think I'm a fool? Some people say that, oh, why are you a coward? I said, I'm not a coward, it's a sunnah of the Prophet. It's a sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did hijrat. Okay. When it's difficult to practice your deen and propagate your deen there, India by law we are allowed to preach and propagate our religion. I did not break a single law of the Indian law, not a single. It's allowed by law for me to preach and propagate and practice my faith. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best example. And Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he took us out of India at the right time. The times are getting from bad to worse. And I was aware that mashallah you see on the videos there are non-Muslims, there are Hindus who respect me. The majority of the Hindus they are good. They love the Muslims. It is these politicians who actually instigate them to do action against the Muslims. Now in India Muslims are being lynched because on allegation that they are eating beef they are hanged in public. He didn't have beef, he had meat. And then the police is saying, we'll do investigation whether it was beef or meat. <laughs> Nonsense. You are hanging a person in public. So now the times in India is very bad. I'm thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took me out at the right time. As far as the investigation is concerned, I am ready to cooperate, but they don't want me to in interrogate on the phone. Because when they do it on the phone or in the media, I would love, let the audience, let yes. there be an open interrogation. Why are you wanting a private? Because you know that you have something to hide. In privacy, you can surely threaten me. You can torture, that you cannot do. In public, you cannot do on a video conferencing. So this is nothing but tactics. Now the media is saying, because they gave me three summons and I did not respond to that, now they have put an unbelievable warrant against me. One. This is what happened a few days ago. That happened about a month back. Yeah. yeah. Few days back, what happened, 10 days back, that warrant they took and now they are telling to the Indian government that request to the Interpol that Dr. Zakir Naik should be put on the red corner notice. So now, one week back, the Indian government, according to the media reports, have sent a request to the Interpol saying that Dr. Zakir Naik is promoting terrorism, therefore he should be put on the red corner notice and anywhere in the world, any country finds him, should arrest him and send him to India. We all know that the leading country that is protecting Islam is Saudi Arabia. What do you think of the role of Saudi Arabia? I feel, alhamdulillah, number one, that Saudi Arabia, because it has the Harmain, Makkah and Medina, it's a sacred land, 
and inshallah Allah will protect them. I feel but natural if we look at the complete Muslim Ummah, looks up to Saudi Arabia because it has the Harmain and we believe that we look at them that they would be the people who will, uh, if anything happens, that they are the one who will surely stand forth for the Father of Islam, inshallah.